Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is a shameless plug for my TIG Finger product. But I'm going to also try to throw in some informational stuff and some good arc shots because that's the way I roll. When you're laying in a piece of aluminum like this, welding for very long at all, you know if you've ever done it, the aluminum really heats up. It's hard to prop against it. But I welded all these beads back to back, back to back with, with that TIG Finger on without having to stop. Aluminum Jobs is one place where it really excels. You know, I've never got an email ever saying, you know, I ordered your TIG finger and it's just not that good. Never got one. I have gotten a whole lot of them though that said, I ordered the TIG finger and it was the best money I ever spent. Well, being able to prop steady and have a steady hand does help when you're welding. You know that. Right, let's shift gears and then talk about some just uh, information stuff. I always like to use this little technique here, a step and pause technique where I move the torch ahead and pause and even sometimes lift the arc length a little bit to get it out of the way of the puddle when it grows up from the filler adding. Step and pause is a good technique for aluminum but it works on steel and stainless steel as well. You move, the reason I think it works well is because you're only using one hand at a time so it's not like walking and chewing gum at the same time. You use, you use your right hand, you stop, you use your left hand. And so it's just an easier way to weld for me. It leaves that stack of dimes look that everybody's so nuts about. Don't know why, but they are. And for multi-pass joints like this, they get hot, hot, hot too. You know, if you weld the root and then the hot pass and then you keep going, you know what I'm talking about. If you try to rest your, your uh, finger of your bare glove on there, you'd have to, uh, you know, cut a thumb out of an old stick welding glove or something and use it for a little bit of a heat shield. And it doesn't work that great. It doesn't slide along and let you do a root pass like this where you're going forward and back laying that open butt root pass in there. And then you can come right back with the hot pass side to side, go quickly across the middle like that. You can see it's made out of some slick heat resistant material that lets you just kind of wiggle and slide instead of walking the cup. It's hard to walk the cup on a plate because it's not round and the torch handle gets in the way. If you're doing practice beads, trying to get better, running bead after bead after bead on a piece of metal, it lets you prop on that metal without your finger getting hot. And here again, we're doing that step and pause technique on steel this time. There's a picture of one of my well-worn TIG fingers. I don't just sell them. I use them all the time, too, especially on little joints like this. I'm welding a little cover plate on a, on a piece of square tubing. And sometimes you have to go to great lengths to find a place to prop, but you don't if you got a TIG finger. You can prop right against the metal right near the weld. For a 6G pipe joint, once again, this same root technique, open butt root, laying that wire in there works really good. Anywhere that's not, where there's not a ready place to prop, but right now I've got this light duty pair of cotton gloves on, but I slipped a TIG finger on one finger and I'm propping it like right against the metal where the weld is and no problem. I'm doing a little stainless joint here, propping right there next to the weld. It's just a little fusion weld, uh, making little tiny little circles, tying everything in. This weld doesn't need all that much strength and uh, just didn't need any filler metal, so it was just a really uh, quick, easy way to make a decent looking weld, just using that corner of the inside of the uh, tubing for filler and rolling it over using uh, just enough heat to do that. It makes a pretty decent looking weld doing that technique. For heavy aluminum out of position welds, it's great. And for areas like this where there's just hardly anything to prop on, it's the bomb. There's just not always a ready place to prop, and you can't always walk the cup. So that's when the TIG finger really excels. And I hope you got something out of that. And I know i got to give something in order to get something. So I hope I gave a little bit today. And, you know, what have you got to lose? Are you willing to spend a few bucks to be a better TIG welder? Only you can decide. Thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.